Understanding Dyslexia. Welcome to this brief overview for California educators. This video is made possible through the California Dyslexia Initiative, led by the Sacramento County Office of Education and in collaboration with the California Department of Education, the California Collaborative for Educational Excellence, the State Board of Education, and the University of California San Francisco Dyslexia Center. Hello, my name is Christine Anderson, and I'm a curriculum specialist with the Sacramento County Office of Education. Our purpose today is to answer the question, what is dyslexia? As we consider this question, let's start with the word itself. Did you know that dis in Latin means difficulty and lexis in Greek means words? The word dyslexia actually means difficulty with words. Dyslexia was first identified in the late 1800s. It was noted that intelligent children who were able to learn quite well if taught orally were making little to no progress in reading, despite adequate vision. It was then that dyslexia was first identified and sometimes referred to as word blindness. Here are a few facts we know about dyslexia. Dyslexia has a very high prevalence rate in the general population. It is estimated that dyslexia impacts 5 to 17 percent of the general English speaking population. So in an average sized classroom of 30 students, that's anywhere from two to five students who may be dyslexic. Dyslexia occurs along a continuum from mild to moderate to severe to profound. Dyslexia cuts across all races, socioeconomic levels, genders, native languages, and cultures with similar prevalence rates. Students with dyslexia are a heterogeneous group. Not all students with dyslexia have the same constellation of issues. They each have their own unique learning profile of strengths and weaknesses. Another thing we know is that dyslexia is hereditary. This means that if a member of your immediate or extended family is dyslexic, there is a 40 to 60% chance of your child being dyslexic as well. It's important to note that just as many girls as boys have dyslexia. Dyslexia is a lifelong issue that may coexist with additional contributing factors like ADHD, specific language impairment, or dysgraphia, which is a disorder of written expression. But the good news is we know what works to help students with dyslexia. Early identification and early intervention using a structured literacy approach to reading and language. So let's break down the definition of dyslexia. We're going to use the definition from the California Dyslexia Guidelines approved by the Research Committee of the International Dyslexia Association and the National Institute of Child Health and Human Development in 2002. I'm going to read the entire definition and then we're going to break it down sentence by sentence. By the time we finish, you'll have a better understanding of dyslexia. Dyslexia is a specific learning disability that is neurobiological in origin. It is characterized by difficulties with accurate and or fluent word recognition and by poor spelling and decoding abilities. These difficulties typically result from a deficit in the phonological component of language that is often unexpected in relation to other cognitive abilities and the provision of effective classroom instruction. Secondary consequences may include problems in reading comprehension and reduced reading experience that can impede growth of vocabulary and background knowledge. Okay, let's begin with the first sentence. Dyslexia is a specific learning disability that is neurobiological in origin. What is meant by a specific learning disability? Dyslexia is referred to as a learning disability because dyslexia can make it very difficult for a student to succeed in learning to read, write, and spell. A student with dyslexia may qualify for special education with specialized academic instruction 
in addition to any needed accommodations and modifications of curriculum. The definition says that dyslexia is neurobiological in origin. Let's learn a little bit more about that descriptor. In a typical brain, we know that there's an entire reading circuit that needs to be activated in order to read and process language successfully. This image will help us understand which parts of the brain are responsible for reading. We'll start with the frontal lobe. Here, speech sounds, including input and output of sounds, are processed. Moving up and toward the back is the parietal lobe. This part of the brain is activated for word analysis and sound symbol connection. At the very back is the occipital lobe, which supports letter and word recognition. Finally, there is the temporal lobe, which is central to language comprehension processing. The temporal lobe is also activated during word analysis, sound symbol connection, and letter and word recognition. Here's an image of a typical reader's brain. During the reading process, multiple regions of the brain are actively engaged simultaneously, as shown by the three colored regions. Notice how this image is different from the next image of a dyslexic brain. With this dyslexic brain, prior to targeted intervention, only one region appears to be activated during reading. This limited activation impacts a reader's ability to read accurately and fluently. The good news is with effective intervention, we can actually create new pathways in the brain and create activation in the dyslexic brain that is quite similar to the activation pattern of typical readers. Now for the second sentence in our definition. It, dyslexia, is characterized by difficulties with accurate and or fluent word recognition and by poor spelling and decoding abilities. Dyslexia affects individual word reading. In other words, students with dyslexia have difficulty reading words in isolation, both accurately and fluently. This difficulty with individual word reading also affects the ability to spell words correctly and decode words in context. You may be wondering why this is happening. Well, as the third sentence in the definition states, these difficulties typically result from a deficit in the phonological component of language that is often unexpected in relation to other cognitive abilities and the provision of effective classroom instruction. Students with dyslexia have difficulty both perceiving and manipulating individual sounds in language. And as a result, they have trouble mapping the correct sounds onto letters in print. Most students with dyslexia have a primary deficit in phonological processing. This graphic from the California Dyslexia Guidelines was developed by Wagner, Torgerson, and Rashat, and adapted by Nancy Cushion White. It shows how phonological processing falls directly underneath auditory processing. Phonological processing includes three essential components. Those components are phonological memory, which is the ability to hold on to verbal information in short-term memory. Phonological awareness, which is the ability to perceive individual sounds and syllables in words. And naming speed which is the ability to rapidly name letters, numbers, and objects, which has been shown to be an early predictor of reading acquisition. As shown in the diagram, phonemic awareness falls directly underneath the umbrella term phonological awareness. Phonemic awareness includes phoneme blending, phoneme segmentation, and phoneme manipulation. This refers to the specific ability to blend, segment, and manipulate individual sounds or phonemes. While the definition notes that dyslexia is typically the result of a deficit in phonological processing, some students with dyslexia have issues with orthographic processing. Orthographic processing is the ability to understand and recognize the spelling system and writing conventions of any given language, as well as automatically recognizing when words contain correct and incorrect spellings. 
Good orthographic processing skills contribute to automatic word recognition and fluent sight word reading. Students with severe dyslexia may have deficits in both phonological and orthographic processing. Researchers are continuing to explore evidence reflecting multiple environmental and genetic factors that contribute to a dyslexic profile. Let's return to this sentence from the definition of dyslexia. The second part of the sentence states that dyslexia is often unexpected in relation to other cognitive abilities and the provision of effective classroom instruction. It's important to note, however, that students with dyslexia often have average to above average intelligence. So far in the definition, we've explored what dyslexia is, but there are often secondary consequences associated with dyslexia. This brings us to the final sentence in our definition. Secondary consequences may include problems in reading comprehension and reduced reading experience that can impede growth of vocabulary and background knowledge. As you can imagine, if you are having difficulty reading words accurately and fluently, not only does that impact word recognition, it will ultimately have a negative impact on your overall reading comprehension. Most likely, you are going to avoid reading, thereby limiting the growth of your vocabulary and background knowledge. Additional secondary consequences may include issues with written expression, mathematics, and executive functioning, which includes the ability to plan, organize, and self-monitor. Now that we've examined the definition of dyslexia, let's highlight some of the strengths students with dyslexia may have. Students with dyslexia can have strong visual-spatial skills and can be big picture thinkers. They can demonstrate incredible creativity with the abilities to excel in diverse domains such as art and music, storytelling, engineering, and entrepreneurial activities. In one study, more than a third of the U.S. entrepreneurs surveyed identified themselves as dyslexic. People with dyslexia can have great pattern recognition, narrative reasoning skills, and ability to understand complex systems. With proper identification and intervention, students with dyslexia can thrive. We have learned about the definition of dyslexia, so how might we identify students with dyslexia in our schools? A multi-tiered system of support provides a framework for identifying and supporting students with dyslexia. This image of the California multi-tiered system of support, known as MTSS, is from the California Dyslexia Guidelines. The MTSS framework describes a comprehensive and collaborative system that provides a continuum of universal, supplemental, and intensified supports. The framework includes guidance for identification and effective instruction for struggling readers and students with dyslexia. The MTSS framework provides details about each tier of support. Universal support, the bottom tier, is provided to all students. Supplemental support, the middle tier, is provided to some students based on identified need. Approximately 15% of students may require this additional support. Individualized support, the top tier, is provided to a few, 2 to 5% of students, and is also based on identified need. Universal design for learning, differentiated instruction, and integrated content and service delivery systems are used within all tiers of support. Let's examine the MTSS framework a bit more closely, beginning with universal support for all students. This level of support includes universal screening, which is administered to all students. So why is universal screening so important? Research has shown that early years are critical for literacy development. And the sooner we are able to identify students who may be at risk for reading difficulties, including dyslexia, the sooner we can begin providing evidence-based interventions. It is imperative that we, as educators, identify students who might be at risk as early as possible and provide appropriate supports based on individual needs. In an MTSS framework, instructional decisions are based on data. 
Since dyslexia occurs on a continuum from mild to moderate to severe to profound, the severity of dyslexia and students' literacy development will determine which tier of intervention or instruction they will need within a multi-tiered system of support framework. Students with dyslexia may be served in Tier 1 with universal support, Tier 2 with additional supplemental support, or in Tier 3 with individualized support. It is important to note that instructional decisions are based on universal screening, progress monitoring, and formal and informal assessment of students' needs. Students with dyslexia may need accommodations and modifications to fully access core curriculum. In an MTSS framework, universal support for all students also includes evidence-based practice in curriculum and instruction. One key practice is to include structured literacy, a cohesive approach to teaching language and literacy as part of a comprehensive English language arts curriculum. Research has demonstrated that structured literacy benefits all students and is essential for students with dyslexia. Teachers with deep content knowledge and understanding of reading acquisition can provide effective structured literacy instruction at all three tiers. Structured literacy is a term that encompasses common principles and elements. The International Dyslexia Association infographic, What is Structured Literacy?, provides information on the principles and elements. The principles include approaches to reading instruction that are systematic and cumulative, direct and explicit, diagnostic, and multimodal. The International Dyslexia Association infographic also outlines the content of structured literacy, what is taught. Elements include phonology, sound symbol association, syllables, morphology, syntax, and semantics and comprehension. As we noted in the beginning, the good news is we know what works to help students with dyslexia. Using an MTSS framework, universal screening will help us with early identification and allows us to provide an early intervention using a structured literacy approach to reading and language. This MTSS framework relies on problem-solving teams working collaboratively using a continuous improvement process to provide a comprehensive system of supports, resources, and initiatives. Intervention teams work together to determine the severity of a student's dyslexia and the targeted intervention or instruction needed for that student within a multi-tiered system of support framework. We started this video with the question, what is dyslexia? As we close, remember that early and accurate identification in combination with evidence-based intervention and instruction is critical for students with dyslexia to be successful. We hope that this video has served to strengthen your understanding of dyslexia. Please visit the California Dyslexia Initiative website found at scoe.net backslash CA Dyslexia. There, you can learn more about this project and access additional videos. The content for this video was developed by the California Dyslexia Initiative Project staff at the Sacramento County Office of Education. Technical production of this video was performed by the Sacramento County Office of Education's Internet and Media Services Department.